Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Brandon again in the basement today off of the tripod for once. Yes, tripod free, which means I'm going to get quite the delt workout having to hold up this camera. But I wanted to take a little bit of time today to talk about my weird beard. What weird beard are you talking about? Well, this one. You're all up in it right now. It's pretty fucking weird. Anyway, those of you who've been following me for any length of time know that for most of my YouTube life, I have had the Don Johnson or the five o'clock stubble beard-ish. Sometimes it gets a little bit longer, but for the most part, I've never really grown my beard longer than three weeks. I think I made a video talking about it back when I did that, outside of the couple of times that I did the Movember mustache, which I still get constant reminders of people who remember those days to bring that back, which who knows, maybe this will eventually turn into that. Anyways, cutting to the chase. So the reason I have this right now is, you guys know for work I travel quite a bit, and as part of that I usually like to look somewhat presentable, and usually with a beard things don't get presentable till a little bit later. You know, the five o'clock look works very well for me, I think. I think it adapts to my face really well, especially when there's no hair on top, there's not much you can do. As part of that though, anyone who's tried to grow a beard out longer or spent the time trying to see if they can grow a beard, after about a week or two, things get pretty gross. In fact, I would describe them as looking very puby. So you guys can use your imagination to see what that looks like. And from my understanding, talking to most people who have very nice beards, they usually say you have to let it go at least 90 days without cutting it. Well, my friends, we're about 10 weeks in, so that's about about 70 days, so I'm getting very close to that mythical 90-day mark. I can't say that I've not touched my face whatsoever. I have tried to maintain it some, mostly obviously around my cheek lines, my neck for sure, because no one likes a good old-fashioned neck beard. Um, I've also played a little bit around with just making sure I cut some of the hair out from my mouth, because that can get pretty bad when you're trying to eat and or have a significant other. Surprisingly enough, my wife hates my beard, but a bunch of random dudes on the internet really like it. Go figure, who's gonna win that battle? Right now, it's the dudes. Um, but other than that, just also trying to trim a little bit, especially around here where my ears are. I am not blessed with having hair gains right now in my head, so I can't just tie my beard into my normal hair because there's nothing there. So I have done a little bit of fading right now. It does need some cleaning up, but it's just one of those things. So my real big goal here is because I don't have to travel again, until the end of February. I literally have almost 90 days between um, when I have to go out there for work. So I stopped, or I stopped shaving, I should say, my literally last day in Seattle last time, which was like November 17th, I wanna say. And so it'll be exactly 90 days before I have to go out there again. So my goal is with this beard, as weird as it is, and as much as my wife doesn't like it, to continue to grow it out at least until that date in Seattle, so the end of February. From there, I'm hoping to make a more well-informed decision. And right now, it doesn't look too bad. When I put on some dress clothes, or depending on where I'm going in a public setting, it can look pretty gross. I try to keep it pretty well managed between beard oil and beard balm. A lot of people have suggested that to me, and trust me, I've been using that since day one because it really does help cut down on any itching. I know a lot of people generally have itching issues when they're trying to grow out a beard. I was always one of those, but I was never really using the the balm or the oil, and since I started using those as soon as I started growing this, I haven't really run into any itchy issues. Um, but that being said, even though it looks, in my opinion right now, pretty tame for the most part, it can get pretty bushy. So I posted a picture on Instagram like a week or two ago, so I'll flash it on screen right now just because I don't feel like rubbing my fingers through my hair on a YouTube video, although maybe some people get off on that kind of stuff and I could get a whole different type of audience. Um, it is actually quite bushy, but I kind of keep it a little bit tamed down. Another thing I'm running into with issues, and it's a little bit different, is the coloring of my beard. My hair, when I had it, was more of a medium to dark brown. My beard, while well, it definitely has that, also has a lot of grays, as you guys can see. It also has a lot of reds and maybe even a little bit of blonde in there too. Um, it's not so bad right here in the chin area where it's more concentrated, but I get like random white hairs over here in my cheek, which really look weird because again, they're a little bit more puby and they're also tending to grow a little bit faster than the rest. So when they're longer than the other hairs and they stick out, 
looks a little bit weird. So I've tried to do my best to kind of trim those up a little bit. But that's where we're standing on my beard. I'm not sure where we're going to take it again. My goal is to get to 90 days and then make a more well-informed decision then. Again, as I mentioned, I've been trying to maintain it myself, but I think one of the things I'll likely do before I actually shave it off, if I do decide to shave it off, is at least go to a real barber and have them kind of shape it a little bit, maybe do some actual work, whereas I'm just doing my myself right now, which I think I've done a pretty good job in all honesty, uh, but I'd like to actually have someone kind of take a whack at it, if you will, and see if they can salvage something that looks more presentable. And from there, maybe I'll keep it, maybe I'll shave it, maybe I'll just go down to a mustache, who knows, but I wanted to update you on my weird beard. Another thing I wanted to do on this off day of training for me, now that we're getting a little bit more personal and you've been up all in my face a little bit, I also want to show you a recent package I got sent from Ohio Fitness Garage. So I just want to show you what they sent me. Just some different little items. Nothing where I would probably make an in-depth review video. But I do want to thank them for sending me some stuff. And let's take a look to see exactly what they sent me. Okay, so here we go. Here's me. Here's my box. I'll be putting my hands into my box. Let's just get all the box and windows out of the way. But again, this is from Ohio Fitness Garage. Like I said, they started off in their garage selling equipment. They've expanded, they sell a whole bunch of stuff. They sent me some random things. Let's go ahead and see what's in here. Okay, so the first thing that I have here, let's see if I can open it with my bare hands. It's a loading pin. There we go. So we have a loading pin here and this thing is actually going to be very handy. And I know this doesn't look great me doing this on film, but uh, this is great. So first of all, let me show you what else they sent me that is supposed to go with this. So what we have right here is also a pinch plate. So the idea here is that you put weight onto the loading pin. You then attach the pinch plate to the loading pin and you work on your grip training. So this is a form of grip training, which I have never spent a ton of time on but it might be very helpful. I know people like Juju Mufu does a lot of this stuff. It looks interesting. I've always thought I've had a strong grip, but now I can really test it with this. Another good thing that I'm thinking of right now, now that I have this loading pin that I can do, is number one, I could use this with my spud ink pulley when I do tricep work and things of that nature. But also I have a brute belt, which is like a glorified dip belt, which is a lot better than a normal dip belt but I could probably rig something up with these benches, that dip belt and this loading pin to make kind of a little bit of a ghetto homemade belt squat. So that'll be interesting. So those are two items right there. Uh, the next thing in here is actually a two piece item, I believe. I might have to stand up for this one. Oh. All right, so what we have here, what it looks like is some deadlift blocks. So some things with this, you can tell it's made from wood. Um, from what I can see, it looks to be, I would say probably about four to five inches. It has catches on the front so the weight doesn't move. You guys might have seen the ones that I made before. So I have a video on how you can make these yourself. One of the things that I don't really like about mine is the fact that they're so big and heavy that they're kind of a pain in the ass where I never really feel like moving them. These ones are definitely on the smaller side, I will say, uh, but maybe they would be more akin to being used because they're more portable and easy to move. Um, but that's what we got. So thank you to Ohio Fitness Garage for the two uh, deadlift blocks as well as for the pinch plate and the loading pin. As I said, you guys can check them out. I will link these products and their website in the description if you wanna check them out too. They have a ton of other stuff, so I appreciate them sending me this. I'm gonna go out and keep growing this weird beard and we'll talk to you next video.